It's truly a pleasure for me to uh, chair together with Kayla Green the second um, session of this excellent um, the symposium. And the first speaker is uh, Ifat Miller, a uh, professor uh, in uh, Ben Gurion uh, University, who does superb computational studies on all kinds of uh, amyloid system as well as other uh, interesting biomolecules. But today she will speak about uh, controlling and modulating insulin fibrillation by specific zinc binding sites. Ifat, please. Okay, so thank you. Uh... Uh, Udi, and I would like to thank Rams for organizing this uh, nice uh, symposium. And uh, so as you've seen in the first sessions, uh, several amyloids like amyloid beta and alpha synuclein, and we know that all these amyloids form fibrils. So also insulin form fibrils. And we can see here uh, an insulin fibril that we predicted uh, just recently using experimental data. Uh, so in fact, about 10 years ago, it has been uh, shown that during the insulin therapy uh, of patients with type 2 diabetes, uh, insulin forms fibril at the repeated sites of the injection. So when I read this paper, I found it very, very interesting. And in this lecture, I will uh, mainly focus on the effect of the uh, zinc ions on insulin fibrillation. So uh, we know that amyloid proteins are involved in numerous amyloid diseases. In our lab, we focus on five amyloid proteins, A, beta, tau, alpha, synuclein, amylin, and insulin. And of course, we know that amyloid monomers are self-assembled in, in the irreversible process named aggregation to produce toxic oligomers and finally mature fibrils. And we know that metals uh, bind to amyloid proteins and in some cases even promote a amyloid aggregation. So metals uh, bind uh, to amyloids at different concentrations, at different ratio metal amyloids, and at different metal binding sites. So in this lecture, I will briefly present our previous work on the effect of metals on A-beta, alpha-synuclein, and amylin, and I will mainly focus on uh, the uh, effect of uh, zinc ions on the fibrillation of insulin. So we know that uh, there are metals such as zinc ions and copper ions that are, are concentrated in and around amyloid plaques in Alzheimer's disease brain. And it was suggested that uh, zinc ions, for example, bind to amyloid beta and promote uh, a beta aggregation. And we previously uh, uh, investigated the polymorphic zinc and amyloid beta fibrils at different concentrations and at different uh, metal binding sites. And uh, the highlight of one of the highlights of this uh, work was th that we found that at low zinc concentrations, they are more ordered aggregate, as we can see from these plots. Uh, we found that aggregates with relatively low uh, RMSD values and with relatively high number of uh, hydrogen bonds. Uh, however, at high zinc concentrations, there are less aggregates. That means that at uh, when you, we increase the zinc concentration, actually we see a decrease in amyloid beta aggregation and a decrease in uh, A-beta fibrillation. We also investigated polymorphic copper uh, A-beta amyloid fibrils at different uh, metal binding sites. This work was in a collaboration with experimental group. And, and uh, this was the, published uh, many years ago. And uh, we know also that copper ions is involved in the etiology of Parkinson's disease. Uh, and it has been shown uh, by uh, Peter and also by Claudio uh, in, the, in the first station uh, that copper is involved in, in Parkinson's disease. It was found that there are high levels of copper uh, ions in the cerebrospinal fluid in brain of Parkinson's disease patients. And as uh, Claudia shows, 
Uh, there are three possible uh, copper binding sites in alpha synuclein monomers uh, that actually have been also shown uh, uh, by uh, many experimental uh, studies. Uh, so there are two in the amphiphatic domain and one in the acidic domain. However, the specific uh, copper binding sites in uh, alpha synuclein fibrils uh, has not been investigated at uh, the atomic resolution, uh, neither by experiment nor by simulations. Uh, moreover, the, uh, there is no data with regards to copper alpha synuclein ratio uh, in alpha synuclein uh, fibril. So applying a two polymorphic alpha synuclein uh, fibril, one that was proposed in our group, and the second uh, solved by solid state in MR, uh, we uh, examined the three possible binding sites in alpha synuclein fibrils, uh, the uh, amphiphatic, one in the amphiphatic domain, which is in the N terminal domain. The second site is the histidine 50. And the third one is the, uh, uh, the acidic uh, domain, as we see here. And there were several conclusions that were obtained in this uh, uh, work. We found that copper ions increase alpha synuclein polymorphism due to the fact that we found a variety of copper binding sites in alpha synuclein fibrils. And we found that there are two possible copper alpha synuclein ratios, uh, both one to one and one to two. And finally, uh, we found that when uh, while copper ions bind to histidine 15 alpha synuclein monomer, the copper ions do not bind to histidine 15 alpha synuclein fibrils. However, they do bind to the amphipathic and the acidic domain in alpha synuclein fibrils. And we presented the mechanisms of the uh, in which zinc in which copper ions bind to alpha synuclein fibrils, as we can see here. And we published this in a paper a few years ago. So what about aniline? So we know that aniline is released from the pancreatic beta cells together with zinc and, and insulin. And we know, and, and actually it was suggested that zinc binds to aniline peptides and promote amylene aggregation and consequently leads to the progression of type 2 diabetes. So previously, uh, using uh, the crystal structure of TICO and uh, the, uh, the solid state MR uh, of uh, TICO and the crystal structure of uh, Eisenberg, um, we applied, we predicted uh, polymorphic uh, amylin fibrils that differ in the orientation of the residues along the fibril axis. So we are interested to look at a the metal that binds to a amylene a fibrils. And uh, we looked at the zinc uh, uh, ion, and what actually we found is that uh, Ram's group uh, uh, proposed that the histidine 18 in amylene uh, monomer bind to zinc ion and then promote a, a beta aggreg a, a amylene aggregation. But also one they proposed later that when zinc binds to aniline and forms fibrils, we see that the fibrils adopt cross beta structure. So if you would like to understand uh, what is the zinc aniline ratio, so the, the, the proposal that zinc binds to six aniline aggregates is not possible because it not forms a fibrils. However, uh, it is suggested that zinc amylene ratio could be one to two or one to four, and this was not uh, uh, proved or examined before. And we did it, and we ran simulation using uh, one zinc ions and two amylene uh, monomers, or uh, the, with this ratio in the fibril structure, and also for the one to four. And indeed, we found uh, four. A zinc amylene fibrils with zinc amylene ratio of one to two, as we can see here in the zooming uh, structure. And uh, we found also two polymorphic uh, zinc amylene fibrils with zinc amylene ratio of one to four. 
Uh, so um, there were several conclusions that were obtained from this uh, work. Uh, first, uh, that the zinc ions do not affect the cross-fit structure of amylene fibrils, and this is in agreement with the experiment of rounds. And I didn't show you here, but we found also that some models of zinc uh, amylene fibrils are more prone to aggregate than others. And finally, and I think interestingly, most in interesting thing is that the polymorphism depends on the zinc uh, concentration. While in absence of zinc ion, we see a relatively high polymorphic state in amylene uh, fibrils. When we um, add zinc ions at low zinc concentrations, we see a, a very low polymorphic state. When we increase the zinc ion concentrations, we see more polymorphic state. So this is a very uh, uh, interesting uh, result. So now I'll focus on our uh, recent uh, uh, work on uh, uh, the effect of the zinc ion on insulin fibrillation. And we just published this recently. We're now working on the proof of this paper. So actually it is already online in the inorganic chemistry uh, frontiers website. So we know that, the, the, as I said, insulin and amylene and zinc are released from the pancreatic beta cells, and we know that zinc also binds insulin. And uh, what we wanted to look not on the oligomers, but on the fibrils themselves to understand how the zinc affects the insulin fibrillation. So first we have to predict the structure of insulin. And, and, the, and the only structure that we found in the literature was of uh, a, a Eisenberg that uh, published this paper in 2009 showing uh, the insulin fibrils, but not the full length structure of the insulin fibrils, but partially uh, it shows the, the fibrils in the, in the double layer, what we called for insulin. Uh, and we were interested in the full length uh, insulin fibrils. So what we did is we extended the structure and uh, predicted the full length insulin uh, fibrils as we can see here. And chain A is in the blue and in chain A, B is in rear and red. And we have all these three di disulfid bonds. Uh, so that was nice. Now the, the second step was to find the, the specific uh, uh, zinc binding sites. And this is more challenging because it, it, so far, there is no experiment uh, that shows what are the specific zinc binding sites in insulin fibrils. But when looking at the sequence of the insulin uh, uh, here, uh, we found that there are several uh, possible uh, zinc binding sites, uh, which are two in uh, chain A and four in chain B. And uh, what we wanted to look at separately, uh, how a, a zinc affects when it binds to each one of these a, a binding sites. So we uh, predicted the four, six uh, structures of insulin fibrils that bind the zinc ions, two in chain A, glutamic four and glutamic 17, and four in chain B, which is histidine five, histidine 10, glutamic 13, and glutamic 21. And we run the simulations for all these six models. And uh, we just wanted to look how the zinc affects the insulin fibrillation. Now, because we know that uh, insulin forms post beta structure, and we know that the sequence, uh, this sequence in chain B plays crucial role in insulin fibrillation, we wanted to look at this sequence in chain B to see whether zinc affects the insulin fibrillation. And what interesting we found is that when zinc binds to glutamic form, for example, we see that in presence of zinc, the zinc actually induces insulin fibrillation because it forms more beta strands. However, when zinc binds to copper 17, uh, to gl glutamic 17, we see that there is no effect of the zinc ion on the insulin fibrillation. So what happens when we bind the zinc ion to chain B? So here are the results. 
we found actually that uh, zinc ion control the insulin fibrillation in chain B, and it depends on the, uh, the uh, zinc binding sites. If zinc ion binds to histidine 5, we see that it induces insulin fibrillation. In glutamic 13 and in glutamic 21, we see slightly effect of induced of fibrillation. However, when it binds to STD5, we do not see much difference. So it totally depends on the specific binding sites. We also calculated the uh, conformational energies of this, the different of the, all these different models in which zinc binding site the three, uh, the six the different binding sites. Uh, I don't, I'm not showing here the conformational energy, but we also calculated the populations which show the same trend. And we found that zinc ions prefer to interact, to bind in chain A, which is in glutamic 4 and glutamic 17, and in chain B with histidine 10 and glutamic 21. But what is interesting is that there is exa spectra that was uh, presented there previously uh, that shows that histidine 10 uh, in uh, insulin fibrils binds a zinc ion uh, with uh, two water molecules. So this is not that we found this specific binding site. However, we found that there are also other possible uh, 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 cases in which zinc can, could bind in insulin fibrils. Uh, we also looked at the fluctuation of the residues along chain B in order to look at the stabilization of zinc ion uh, in insulin fibrils. And we found that actually zinc does not uh, affect the, the chain B uh, and actually stabilize the chain B in all models. And when we looked at the fluctuations of the residues along chain A, Again, we do not see much difference with, uh, compared to uh, insulin in absence of zinc ions. However, what we found that there's some fluctuation between residue six to uh, 11, which is actually the interchain linkage disulfide bond in chain A. So when we wanted to understand the, uh, the dynamics that leads to this relatively high fluctuations compared to the other residues, uh, we actually, what we did, we computed the dihedral angle uh, between the uh, six, uh, 16, 6 to 16, uh, 16 11. Um, in a, when what we found that in absence of zinc ions, just for the insulin fibrils, we found a relatively um, narrow uh, distribution of these dihedral angles. And however, when we add the zinc ions, for example, in chain A, we found that these dihedral angles show relatively wide uh, range of distribution of the dihedral angles. So this shows actually more the dynamics, more the fluctuations of uh, this uh, specific uh, uh, disulfide bond. And a similar scenario we found when we looked at the models in which zinc binds to, a, a, to the chain B. So we come to the conclusion that zinc induces the reshuffling of the intra-chain linkage disulfide bond in chain A. Now, we know that zinc ions bind to several domains in chain A, uh, in insulin and fibrils. And uh, for example, if it binds to in chain A uh, in, in glutamic 4, we found that along all the time of the stimulation, the zinc binds to all four oxygen atoms around. For each, uh, for, for example, for each glutamic acid, there are two uh, oxygen atoms, right? However, when it binds to glutamic 17, it binds uh, only to two oxygen atoms for each one of the glutamic 17. And in chain B, uh, we, we also see that there is no uh, uh, consensus. For example, in histidine 10, it binds to two histidine uh, for each monomer, uh, which are very uh, close to each other nearby. However, 
when it binds to histidine 5, in some cases, the glutamic 4 in chain A joins the coordination node. And when it binds to glutamic 13 in chain B, it binds to two oxygen atoms. However, when it binds to glutamic 21, it, uh, it binds to three or to four oxygen atoms. So this is very uh, uh, interesting just to look at the variety of the uh, coordination modes, uh, even in one uh, insulin feed. And finally, uh, we also, uh, uh, measured the intersheet distances, two intersheet distances along the insulin fibrils. And what we found that there are actually no much difference. This indicates that uh, zinc ions do not affect the cross beta structure of insulin uh, fibrils. So to summarize, uh, zinc ions may bind to six possible binding site in insulin fibrils. Uh, it could bind to two uh, in chain A and four in chain B. And in chain B, there are two most stable insulin fibrils that bind zinc ions and induce the insulin fibrillation. And in chain A, in one case, in one fibril, we see that zinc ions induce the fibrillation, while in the second case, zinc ions do not affect the fibrillation. And we found that there are high fluctuations along the, in, along the intra disulfid bond in chain A that led to the disruption of the helices in a chain A. a. And uh, finally, zinc ions do not affect the cross beta structure of insulin. So, if I can summarize this work, uh, zinc ions uh, do not affect the cross beta structure of insulin, it can, but in some cases, it can induce insulin fibrillation. So all the, the molecular dynamic simulations uh, were performed in our high performance computer cluster that is funded partially by NIH and by ISF. And I would like to thank uh, my students. Uh, the work I presented here today mainly about the effect of zinc on insulin fibrillation done by Shia and Shushan and uh, the other work on uh, amylene and alpha synuclein done by Vered and Daniel. And of course, to thank you the funding and, and uh, thank you very much for your attention and I'll be happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Ifaz, for the very interesting talk. Let's see if there are any questions. Uh, not yet, let, let me start with the, the first question. Uh, you discussed the, the possibility of several or, or, or uh, exploration of several binding sites. So what do we know about the, the difference in the affinity when you have uh, several ions? It's like occupying the first site and then the other ones, or you have in parallel binding to, to uh, um, uh, several sites. Um, what is known uh, computationally and experimentally about this? So experimentally, there is no information with regards on several binding sites at the same time, simultaneously. Okay, I also, now we, we can do some simulations, examine uh, the, um, the uh, simultaneously several binding sites. But unfortunately, I think in my opinion, there's no, uh, there's no um, chance that this will be really happening. Um, and um, with regards to the binding affinity, this is the other questions that you've asked. Um, so we, we cannot give number of specific number of the binding affinity like in experiments, but we can estimate how, um, how, how much the uh, metal binds strongly or not strongly to uh, the residues according to looking at the, uh, the, the distances between the, the metal ions and, and the residues. This is something that we can estimate yeah. the, the, and similar to binding affinity, yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have now a question uh, from Anup uh, uh, Arun uh, Giri. Uh, interesting work, three questions, one. Does, in, uh, does uh, zinc cause disulfide uh, 
bonds shuffling in the insulin monomers? Maybe we'll you answer one by one. Uh, so I first, don't know. Uh, just, yeah, 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 one by one. Is, I, I don't know because we didn't simulate the insulin monomer, uh, but it's it's interesting to, to check. Yeah. Yeah, the second one is how different are zinc interactions in insulin fibers versus monomers? Or monomer? Okay, so again, we didn't um, simulate it on um, insulin monomer with zinc. So this is something also to think about. Okay, and the <laughs> third one is where does zinc meet insulin fibers in cells? I, I didn't hear the question, sorry. Where does zinc meet insulin uh, uh, fibers in cells? Well, in cells. In cells, I don't know. I know that it's in uh, extracellular. Um, but in cells, we didn't look at it. So I don't really know. Maybe, maybe I will follow up on this. You, you, you mentioned during your presentation the, the um, uh, binding of the zinc to uh, uh, IPP and then to insulin. And we know that uh, there's co-secretion of uh, IPP and insulin. Do you think there is exchange between uh, the two molecules or, or metal like ions? Like a competition, like a competition between amine and insulin. Competition between the, these two co-secreted molecules. Yeah, um, uh, probably. Uh, it probably also depends on the, the zinc concentrations, I guess. So um, it could be. Uh, actually, it's known that amylene um, is the peptide that is more playing role in type 2 diabetes than even than insulin because it, it is suggested that amylene aggregates lead to the death of the beta cells and therefore there's no insulin uh, release uh, from the beta cells. So it's probably zinc binds strongly to amylene than to insulin. Um, but this is, I don't know if there is any work about, maybe Rams know better about yes. that. So, um, actually, yes, actually there's a question from Rams. Uh, if mm -hmm. at a nice talk, is zinc binding um, uh, does not disrupt the cross beta structure uh, insulin? Is the is the claim zinc yes. binding does not disrupt the cross beta structure insulin proved experimentally? Through experimentally? Yes. Uh, Was it proven experimentally? I, I don't think it's improved in experimentally yet. Okay. Yeah. This and is the first study, question, and we hope others. Will what do is? It? Yeah. Yes, please. So uh, no, I, I think yes. maybe <laughs> we. Uh, someone should buy, uh, test it experimentally. And, and the second question is, uh, uh, what is known about the effect of pH change on uh, zinc insulin binding? You mean uh, uh, pH? Uh, pH, yes, pH change. Um, I don't think some, some experiments known about this. I don't think so. No. There is no information with regards to this. Insulin, I, I found that lots of people studying uh, A-beta, A-amylene, and alpha synuclein uh, less work on um, insulin. I guess the insulin is, is more complicated than chain A, the chain B. It was very challenging, even in the computational, to predict the structure of insulin. So, so I guess also the experiment, I don't know, but I think it's, it's more complicated to do that. The first factor of past this factor of the insulin fibrils was many years ago by Eisenberg, but others, I've, I've not seen much work on that, particularly metal combined to insulin. So, but I hope that our work will initiate experimentalists to do more Some on that, yeah. Great, thank you so much. I, I think we are just in time. Oh, there's another question. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, could you simulate changes in pH? Could you simulate uh, changes uh, in pH on amylene and insulin aggregation? Insulin vesicles in beta cells are quite acidic. Uh, we can simulate the different uh, conditions like pH in membranes. I mean, in, in 
is also something uh, uh, we can try. Um, uh, it's it's more challenging. It's much more challenging, but it's it's interesting to think about it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We can do it. But it's very very challenging. This is from Malak. It doesn't show me the the rest of the name. Yeah. <laughs> from Malak. Um, so okay, I think that we will move now uh, for uh, the next speaker. Thank you very much, Ifat.